YouTube's copyright system is incredibly flawed because it relies entirely on the party that initially took down your content being willing to admit that they were wrong the entire time your content was fair use and allowing YouTube to reinstate it. Which never happens because why would someone that had reason in the first place take down your content, conglomerate or individual, why would they be willing to admit the second time that they were wrong? Which is why YouTube's system, which is two appeals and then a counter notification, doesn't work. Because the first time you appeal it, they'll just say, no, we made the right decision and YouTube will go, okay, you appeal it again, they say, no, we made the right decision decision again and then YouTube puts a strike on your channel and then you can send a counter notification which basically asks them to sue you and if they won't sue you within 30 days your video goes back up. Incredible system that I'm sure has absolutely no issues with it which is why YouTube themselves are willing to admit that millions of videos are unfairly taken down with copyright strikes which is insane to me. How is that even possible? But it's not really a surprise I guess because even I myself have had issues with YouTube's copyright system very frequently. I had a video even recently on Gorgura that was copyright claimed. I appealed it to Callie's musical company basically saying that the use of the song was transformative and was only in there for contextual information and for informative educational reasons. Obviously the company just said no and now I can choose to appeal it again and if I appeal it again they can put a strike on my channel and then if I appeal it a third time I can send a counter notification and then I can risk being sued. Which is stupid because while it's obvious the company probably isn't going to sue you and as such the video will go up, why would you want to wait 60 plus days and risk a strike on your channel for that? The system is quite obviously incredibly flawed as has been highlighted with Mark who recently released a video explaining that Toei Animation, a company that creates the One Piece anime and Dragon Ball anime recently put 150 takedown requests on his videos which is insane because all of his videos were review videos that were completely fair use and as such they've basically removed his entire catalogue of content for the last three years with no justified reason and are continuing to take down his content despite the fact that Toei Animation themselves have actually been willing to work with this creator in the past on content which is insane to me how is the same company that was willing to work with this dude before now taking down his content but it also highlights a very clear concern with Toei Animation. Firstly they're obviously abusing the system here which shouldn't be allowed and YouTube should be stepping in. This should be obvious to anyone which is why it's trending on Twitter because everyone knows how unfair this is but Toei Animation doing this highlights that Toei Animation is literally threatening anyone that produces content including Dragon Ball and One Piece. What they're basically saying in effect is that they've got you dangling from a string and at any point they could cut that string and take away your livelihood, your life source, all of your content, years worth of work that you've produced. They're basically saying that to anyone that produces Dragon Ball or One Piece content which is insane and they shouldn't be allowed to do that but they can because the system's so broken, it's a concern that advertisers or companies can do this and get away with it on YouTube because YouTube has a backwards mindset with the rules as to what's acceptable for creators to do, what's acceptable for companies to do, and obviously they're not going to punish a company, but they will punish a creator. Like, what are they going to do? Put a community guideline strike on Toei Animation's channel? Terminate their channel? Of course they're not. Why would they do that? They'd just risk themselves getting in more shit. And because YouTube has to appeal to safe harbour rules, it means they really can't step in, which is why they need to improve their system so that their system actually works. Which is insane knowing that this is possible even despite the fact that YouTube's copyright system is already so strict. If you include more than three seconds of copyrighted footage from any sort of media out there that's copyrighted, your video will be blacklisted and taken down. Which means you have to ideally, for most copyrighted work, cut between clips every three, four seconds to just be able to upload that work in the first place, whether it's a fair use review or anything else. Which should sound insane to anyone watching this video, but the fact this system can still be abused to the extent it is being is insane and also incredible. Incredible. But before I skip over to Mark's video, please do subscribe to the channel. It would be highly appreciated. I'm aiming for 100k in the next two years. Hopefully Toei Animation doesn't strike down my whole channel before then. And feel free to check out my Twitter too. That would be highly appreciated. Let's get right into the video. Two nights ago, I received an email notifying me that 15 of my videos had been copyright claimed and blocked by Toei Animation. One hour later, that number rose to 28, and when I woke up this morning, it had reached a total of 150 videos that my audience now can no longer see and that I cannot monetize. To put that into perspective, because myself and my team work on a single video per week, that equates to almost three years worth of work, and as a result, the main source of my company's income is now gone. I find this particularly devastating because I have a family to provide for, I have full-time employees to look after, and on top of everything else, it's Christmas. I find it insane that Toei Animation can comfortably justify to themselves taking down 150 videos, three years of work, and destroying someone's livelihood in Christmas for the sake of either proving a point or a lack of education for any of the copyright system. These takedowns violate fair use easily. This content was easily fair use, and it's obvious that it was because Toei Animation has been willing to work with this creator in the past. It's clear that this was targeted, it's clear that this was unjustified, and it is insane to me that anyone could excuse this in any way. I find the concept of losing my 
entire channel's work overnight to be one of my worst nightmares. Losing something you've put that much time into for the most unjustified of reasons is a horrifying thought that I feel nobody should ever have to endure. It's mad to me that Toei Animation could do this to someone and feel like they're in the right. The problem is that a lot of Japanese companies, and this is something that many anime creators talk about, aren't caught up with copyright law because copyright law doesn't really exist in Japan. And while it doesn't exist in Japan, YouTube does have copyright law that Japanese people have to follow, and a lot of them just aren't with the times. They don't understand that people are allowed to use this content if it's fair use, and that they have to abide by that. So a lot of Japanese companies, especially anime companies, will just take down videos including their content, which is why many anime reviewers have to be very meticulous about what clips they use, just so that they can get their uploads finished and post them. I mean, I've made videos that I've had to re-edit and re-upload about four to five times just because of the copyright because it kept getting claimed for no reason. I take my job very seriously. Because of this, I ensure that both myself and my employees adhere strictly to the fair dealings and fair use policies as outlined by YouTube and within my own country and other countries. I am shocked and appalled that I, someone that tirelessly dedicates himself to a fair use practice, has to accept and bend the knee as my life's work gets obliterated before me by a massive company that clearly has no regard or respect for the rules outlined by YouTube themselves. I write reviews, I criticize, analyze, and share what I know about stories. That's my job. It's a job that exists across radio, podcast, television, and a host of other mediums, all of which don't have to contend with the same insane treatments those that produce on YouTube do. YouTube shouldn't have different rules, and yet, Stephen Colbert can produce a video last weekend that includes 100% more toy animation footage than some of the videos that were claimed by Toei from me. All without adhering to the fair use policy and getting shared to millions of people across the world. Well, Toei take it upon themselves to willfully ignore that and personally nuke my entire channel that actively succeeds in being transformative, eliminating years of hard work in the process. And this is where the issue lies. Toei clearly doesn't understand anything about copyright, but it's bizarre that they would wait so long before taking down this channel's content. It feels almost like they were doing this to set an example, similar to what Nintendo would do when they'd take down fan games. And it is quite concerning to see something like this be done by an anime company. I feel like if it's allowed to be set as precedent or if they're allowed to get away with it, a lot of anime companies will follow in the same footsteps, which would effectively kill the genre of reviews on YouTube, despite the fact that reviews are completely fair use. These strikes are not justified, and as is specified very, very, very clearly by Mark in this video, he meticulously works to make sure his videos are fair use, to make sure they follow fair dealings policy, and to make sure they should not under any means be taken down. Yet because of the double standards imposed by YouTube, creators that have more backing from mainstream media are able to get away with producing content that isn't fair use, while creators that follow the guidelines to a T are not able to. I've tried reaching out to YouTube and time and again they gave me nothing, which leaves me with effectively one course of action. The YouTube appeal system. When a video is claimed, I am given the option right away to dispute that claim, and when I dispute it, the claimant, in this case Toei, has 30 days to respond with their decision. That's right. The company that put the claim there in the first place with no incentive to be honest or thorough in this instance gets to decide the legitimacy of my dispute. Naturally, this gets denied and that often takes as many as 30 days. After that, we move on to the second step. Remember, this is still just for one video and this second step is called counterclaim. When I submit a counterclaim, YouTube once again gives Toei ample time to review for another 30 days, during which they again get to decide whether or not my claim is valid, and when they inevitably and arbitrarily decide that it's not, my channel then gets a strike. Which brings us to the last step, counter notifications. This is the phase where YouTube gets directly involved and we enter the legal arena. Once I submit this counter notification, effectively alerting Toei of my desire to bring them to court, they have 15 days to respond, and here's the kicker, they never respond. And by default, my video gets reinstated, which means they claimed my video, prevented me from taking that revenue, killed its momentum, and put me under a tremendous amount of stress for effectively nothing. And this is the main reason that so many people have issue with how this system functions, because it gives the claimant so much control over whether your content goes back up. They get the huge time frame to appeal it, 30 days, where they can do fuck all with the response, waiting till the last day and the last few hours to deny it. They have complete control over whether your video goes up after you appeal it. And here's the real sucker punch to the gut, YouTube effectively punishes creators for fighting for their content to be reinstated, putting a strike on their channel if the company that they're fighting against arbitrarily 
arbitrarily decides that the video isn't fair use. How does that make any sense? It effectively incentivizes creators not to fight for their right to be able to upload content that follows the guidelines because even if their content is completely fair use, it literally doesn't matter because this decision, again, goes back to the claimant where they get to choose again whether they agree with their own decision. And that was all to get one single video back. And I have repeated this process over the last 18 months to get six or so videos back. Unfortunately, with the way YouTube system works, you cannot appeal multiple videos at once, especially because it incurs strikes of which you are allowed very few before your channel gets terminated. And so, as a result, in order for me to get all 150 of my videos that were wrongfully claimed and blocked reinstated, I would need to follow this process for over 37 years. 37 years. He would need to wait 37 years to get three years worth of content reinstated onto his channel. How does that, any of that, any of what I just said to you, make any fucking sense, seem in any way logical? How does that seem fair? That That's insane, having to tiptoe on this balance for years on end, for 30 years, to get back the content that was unfairly taken down because YouTube system is so broken that there's no other way to fight this. There's no other way to get this content reinstated. It is insane to me that you should would think this system works to not think as far as to go maybe people could abuse this system and to know the fact that regular people by the way and this is a really concerning part of youtube's system regular people that don't even own the copyrighted content in the in the video can strike down videos claiming they own the content so some people can just target channels claim everything they've ever posted and they aren't even the real company the system is so fucking broken that it really needs youtube to take a step back and look at the whole thing again youtube if you are watching this, reconsider literally everything about the copyright system because it is so fundamentally flawed that any company or third party actor can abuse it in any way they want, in any way, shape or form and take down whoever they want for whatever reason, for a personal grudge or whatever and that person in certain circumstances may have to wait 37 years to get their content back up on the platform. That is insane. With that being said though, thank you for watching this video to the end. I do appreciate it. The support really does mean a lot to me. If you would like to support me a little bit more, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm aiming for 100k in the next two years, as I mentioned. That support would mean so much to me that I couldn't even explain it. Thank you for all of the recent support. Thank you for 70,000 subscribers. It's insane that I started YouTube at 11 years old, only aiming for 100k. And now that goal, that, that childish pipe dream I had is something I can actually do. And I can say with confidence that I'm doing this as a job that I can live off. It's insane. Thank you for the support. I will see you next time. Sorry if my audio sounds terrible in this video. I'm incredibly sick when I'm recording it. I'll see you next time. Peace. Says you wanna rock when a nigga like me. I'm a stylish guy. Spend a little walk when a nigga like me. We can catch a fly. Says you wanna rock when a nigga like me.